Today on Lockdown Canadians, looking ahead to the wild game, checking in on Laval, and also what is our Habs Christmas wish list? You are Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 978. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. My name is Laura Sabo, also known as The Active Stick, and I'm joined, as always, by the wonderful Scott Matla of Habs, Eyes, and Fries. Scott, we have one more working day before we get, like, a brief interlude. How are you feeling? Uh, well, I'm off for the next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, I have this this many, uh, six freedom unit days off. So uh, uh, unintentionally, and I'm not really sure what to do with that because I'm very used to having a job where I work all the time. Uh, and there's not much hockey in that time frame. There's two Habs game and a Rocket game. But uh, for something for few folks to look forward into next week there, World Junior starts on Boxing Day, which we will have a recap. Uh, Canada is playing as well as uh, the United States. We'll have plenty of Owen Beck and Lane Hudson content for you all next week uh, because, well, Lane Hudson rules and Owen Beck rules. And even though I'm rooting for Canada to lose uh, every game four to three with Owen Beck getting a hat trick, uh, it's going to be a good time. But all things considered, pretty good the holidays are right around the corner uh, literally right around the corner we are f- five days from from uh the baby jesus birthday so like it's a good time to it, i am if you can't tell i'm completely in like vacation mode like i'm giddy <laughs> i'm happy i'm the weight is off my shoulders for a number of things one of which i still cannot talk about on this podcast under penalty of death uh if you are listening to this that is a joke i promise you so um all all, all in all we're good it's, it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. I keep getting distracted. All right. Uh, real quick, please send us your mailbag questions for uh, our mailbag episode for Friday. Uh, you can send them to us at lockdowncanadians at gmail.com, or you can leave them in the YouTube comments, put mailbag question or MBQ at the beginning, uh, or you can tweet them or DM them on Twitter at LO underscore Canadians. All right, Scott, let's get into this game preview. The Canadians are have a ridiculous schedule. They're playing Thursday night. They're playing Friday night. Then they're not playing until uh, the, the next Thursday night, which is fine with me. I think they deserve the rest. We're all, you know, we're all like the holidays is a good time for everybody to rest and spend time with their families. Um, it's just why do they play a Friday and sa- uh, Friday and Saturday? Sorry, Thursday and Friday instead of, you know, Saturday night. I, I guess it's because there's probably travel day. I don't actually know if the NHL has games on Saturday, which I'm hoping they do because... Uh, I can take a look at that, actually, because there's a thing called the schedule. There are 14 games on Saturday. This is not a Habs game. Yeah, there's a 2 p.m. game, a 3 p.m. game, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 games at 7 p.m., 2 games at 7.30, 2 games at 8, 1 game at 9, 2 games at 10. Uh, The Habs play on that Friday. Uh, They are the late game uh, against the Chicago Blackhawks because I assume – they wanted to give Bedard, uh, I believe that's uh, his visit, their first vi- – no, because they're it's an 8.30 start. They're in Chicago there. So uh, they're going to give Bedard the Friday night spotlight when everyone is going to be glued to their TVs or at the bars and whatnot. But we're here to talk about the Thursday game uh, where the Canadians are going to try to make it, I believe it is three straight wins. That's what I put in the show notes for this, uh, against the Minnesota Wild, the team that uh, famously caused my brain to melt at the beginning of the season where their penalty kill – outscored the Habs on one power play two to two to nothing I'm pretty sure one of the worst games I've ever seen uh wait wh- to add to that the Minnesota Wild were in a shambles at that point they were Absolute not great shambles. yeah it, Habs versus Wild like I'm, I want to look at the uh from 10 17 I remember it was bad like it really was very, really it was bad ugly. it was ugly yeah it was five two yes. I'm looking at the ESPN uh, Brandon Duhame short scored shorthanded 920 in the first period. Connor Dewar scored 945. That was the same power play, two nothing. 
Uh, the Wild then scored on their own power play. Tanner Pearson scored. Alex Newhook got a late goal. Uh, ugly, ugly game at that point. Uh, and it was only, it was the Habs' third game of the year. Right. And it was ugly. Yes. Uh, since then, the Wild have fired their head coach. Seemingly have gotten a little bit better. I haven't looked at where they sit in the standings right now. Because the last they time I did more this. more stable. They seem a bit more stable, less erratic at this point. I'm going to I'm gonna make this mistake again. The Minnesota Wild, at, with 30 games played, are 13-13-4 for 30 points. Seventh in the Central Division. Uh, one point behind the St. Louis Blues for sixth. Uh, for reference, the Canadians in 31 games are 14-13-4 with 32 points and are sixth in their division. So, if, You know why? Because the Ottawa Senators are last. Yes, and also the Buffalo Sabres gave up nine goals to the Columbus Blue Jackets. But uh, <laughs> we could talk about that another time. Uh, it, it's a weird potential game just because the Wild have seemingly been the Canadians' boogeyman all for a long time now. I believe the Habs haven't won in Minnesota since the P.K. Subban hat trick game, which is an absolutely no pun That's intended. rough a wild thing there that's uh, a long time ago to make these two teams are right next to each other in team stats too the wild are 23rd on the power play the canadians are 22nd uh in terms of penalty killing the canadians are 28th the wild are 31st this has all the earmarks of a stupid stupid game uh across the board we do know one thing about this game samuel montembeau will get the start starting. Yes. Uh, I imagine Primo might get the Friday start then, or maybe it'll be Jake Allen. But uh, someone on Twitter pointed out this interrupts the rotation of usually it's Montembeau for one and two, Allen, Primo, back to Montembeau again. But I think the schedule kind of dictates that. I'm not going to read way too far into anything with that. Yeah, exactly that. And here's the thing with this game. Uh, it's a it's a meh off, essentially. <laughs> like both of these teams are, are eh. Um, they have promising players. They're not, you know, they're not right there yet. Uh, the Minnesota Wild are sort of on their way down while the Habs are on their way up. But it has all the makings of it could be either an extremely boring game or it could be a really exciting game with a lot of stupid things happening in it. Um, I'm voting for that second thing. But given that it is the Minnesota Wild, I'm not super, super hopeful. But I really hope that it could be, you know, when two really terrible teams play hockey, sometimes it's like a high scoring affair. Uh, there's a lot of like, you know, funny sequences. There's a lot of plays that end up falling apart and things like that. That's what I'm hoping for. But at the end of the day, Scott, you were right. It would be three days, uh, three game, three wins in a row. If they do win, they beat the Islanders. They beat uh, the Winnipeg Jets and the coward Mike, Mark Shifley. Why do I keep calling him Mike? I don't know. Because he's is. not important enough to know his real name. So like, there you go. <laughs> um, um, that's it. So, so I think for me, like, honestly, the, this has all the, the markings of a game that's either going to be really, really, really boring or really, 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 really fun. Because uh, I'm looking at their scoring stats here. Uh, their leading scores, Matt Zuccarello has 28 points. Kirill Kaprizov has 27, which seems low for Kaprizov. Uh, okay. Joel Eriksson has 22 and 30. Matt Boldy has 18 and 23. They're not a high scoring team. And then in net, both uh, Philip Gustafson's bounced back from a rough start to the year. Mark Andre Fleury sitting at an 892, but Mark Andre Fleury also, assuming he is getting the start in Montreal, he usually does for I don't I because it looks like Gustafson is the anointed starter. He has seven more games played than Fleury at this point, but but Fleury against Montreal, I mean, it turns him into prime Patrick Watt. We know how yeah. we know he did it with Chicago last year. He's done it with Minnesota before. We know how this goes. Uh, it, it's maddening and frustrating, and I hate it. Uh, it'll be interesting just because these are two teams that seem very similar in that Minnesota should be better than this, and that's why they fired their coach. They hired John Hines to kind of try and get back into the swing of things here, and the Canadians are rebuilding a little bit, but they're at the same spot right now. Uh, the big thing for the Canadians, stay out of the box as best you can. Uh, stay out of the box and just get pressure on there. Minnesota's prone to making not one mistake, but multiple, like in a short sequence. If you can get to them, kind of rattle that a little bit, you can build hopefully an insurmountable kind of cushion for yourselves there and, you know, give Montembeau the breathing space that he needs there. Uh, I'll be curious to see if the power play can build on 
looking slightly better in the last couple games in this, freeing up Caulfield, freeing up Slavkovsky, Jesse Yolen, and uh, just any of those guys there to see what can happen. Uh, I'm not making predictions because I'm bad at predictions. I think the Habs get at least a point out of this game. Uh, it'll be interesting since they do have to play on Friday as well. So uh, we'll, we'll see how this game goes because it could be, like you said, it could be boring or this could be just chaotic mess. And chaotic mess is always fun sometimes. Right. And after that game, we will have that recap and a mailbag. So don't forget your mailbag questions. Lockedoncanadians at gmail.com, YouTube comments, or on Twitter, LO underscore Canadians. All right, Scott, uh, I want to talk about the uh, Lavelle Rocket uh, because that was what you just spent uh, an evening doing while <laughs> watching. Um, uh, and also, obviously, because we care about our AHL pr- prospects. So we will get into that in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians. But first, this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need, the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S customers all right let's get in to the laval rocket scott you just spent your evening watching that game uh i heard about some excellent goals and some excellent passing but i unfortunately was not able to watch the game tonight let's talk about the rocket so I, a lot of people have been kind of wondering, you know, what's going on? What's wrong? I talked about Casimir Kasikisuo earlier in the week that he joined the team. Uh, he did not dress for this game. It was Strauss man backing up Jakob Dobish who got the start uh, after this game. And after the game against uh, Lehigh Valley last Friday, uh, it's Jakob Dobish's net to lose at this point. His numbers don't look gaudy just because there's been a lot of, bad games uh in the in there for him uh but i gotta say Jakob dobish has been very impressive to me he's gotten a lot better this season uh as it has gone on he is still he has his you know rough rookie looking moments here uh but he's done a lot better cleaning up the excess movements and trying to simplify in that regard we talked about it with carrie price for years and how he makes all of his movements with a purpose that he is going from here to there. He is stopping the puck here and the movement stops. Young goaltenders tend to overexert, overstretch, move too far in one direction, you know, push too hard in this way and lose their net a little bit. He's gotten a lot better at that. Uh, this was a 3 2 rocket win. Uh, Joshua Waugh picked up a pair of assists. Xavier Stimino picked up an assist. Toby Paquette Bisson with two goals. Uh, he opened the scoring for the Rocket, tied the game for the Rocket, and then it was uh, Logan Mayu who was actually the one who helped push this team kind of over the hump in the final part of the game there. Uh, picked up a loose pass from Joshua Wani, he cuts in deep into the offensive zone. He's going right behind the net there. He hits the trapezoid, and he shoulder checks over his left shoulder to see the play behind him, flicks a pass. I don't know how people bend their wrists because it wasn't a backhand pass. It looks like he curled it around himself. Brandon Jinyak's open at the side of the net, and that ended up standing as the game-winning goal for the Rocket. It didn't start well, because the Crunch scored on their second shot of the game, and I all I could think is, here we go again. They kept their tempers level. They did their best to stay out of the box. The penalty kill went three for three on the night. Uh I'm seeing a lot of really good things out of the Rocket, even though their record doesn't fully reflect that. Joshua Waugh has been quieter, but he's now producing more points at five on five than being just a guy who's getting a lot of points on the power play. Two secondary assists tonight is, you know, a way to kind of start getting things back on track. He's getting looks. Uh, He's missing his usual winger, which is Sean Farrell, who was starting to practice again. 
the team still isn't great, but I'm seeing a lot of good signs out of good out of players you want to pay see paying attention to. Logan Mayu and Arbor Jack, I have made a really nice pairing together. Um William Trudeau still working his way through some flaws, but seems to have kind of turned a corner from earlier in the year. And then it's the forward group. It's just it's next man up, and there's a lot of good little things in there, including Riley Kidney being a, a really sneaky second-line winger right now. He's not putting up gaudy points, but the production and just the ability to be uh, present in that game. he You can tell when he's on the ice and doing things there. Uh, it I like what I'm seeing. I don't love where the record's at, but another win bouncing back after a huge loss to Hershey over the weekend is a positive step forward. Uh, they are on... They are traveling back home. They play Wilkes-Barre Scranton on Saturday, and then they are off for the holiday and the year with a three and three. Uh, hopefully, after the holiday roster freeze, they get some good health news from uh, for Sean Farrell, some other players, maybe some guys coming back down from the NHL level as well. Once that freezes up, so maybe Emil Heineman, potentially a Jaden Struble, maybe Jordan Harris on a conditioning assignment. Uh, there's a chance for them to really kind of get back to closer to full strength and use the new year as a big turning point for this team right now. I'm going to ask you a question that I know you are not tired of hearing and you like getting every day. When is Arbor Jack Eye coming back? <laughs> I was <laughs> actually talking to uh, not Matla from lockdown blue jackets uh, about this. And the Habs have a lot of defensemen a lot. So I look at the NHL level you have right now, Matheson, Savard, Struble, Gustav Lindstrom is a healthy scratch right now. Uh, you have Jonathan Kovacevic and Caden Gooley. You have seven defensemen. You send Lindstrom back down. He is waiver eligible, so he will be subject to that when he can go back down. He might get claimed. He might not. We don't know. Okay, so you do that. You still have Jordan Harris coming back. Eight. Arbor Jack guy is nine. Something's got to give there. And he, <laughs> I, I, I kind of like their thought of Kova Savage would likely get claimed on waivers, and I imagine he would. You're not going to send down Caden Gooley. You can't trade David Savard right now. You're not trading Mike Matheson right now. And Struble hasn't done anything to really deserve being demoted at this point. It kind of sends the wrong message. So they're kind of stuck juggling this for the time being. Though Jack High plays a lot of minutes alongside Logan Mayu, and those two are forming a nice partnership and surprisingly despite the reckless nature in their game in some instances is they've been very level-headed uh in in their own zone there's some errors here and there which is a learning curve but it is it is smoothing out some of the rough edges in jack Eye's game love watching our jack i play i will always love watching him play in a canadian's uniform because he's fun he is chaos personified but letting chaos him smooth strength Yes, he has the skating, he has the shot, he has the physicality and just the mentality to be an absolute menace. Uh, I don't, you're well, obviously you're not going to see him until at least the 28th. They'll probably let him play that three and three weekend. And then maybe in the new year, they kind of go, what do we have here? It's like we talked about with the, what I got talked about with the roster freeze. Goalie trade, making room for defensemen. They have a lot of defensemen now. And unfortunately, it might not be a, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just, we want you to play games. So that might mean Struble goes down to the HL. That might mean Jordan Harris goes down on a conditioning assignment. There's a lot of possibilities here. And one of those is a trade. I haven't heard anything. There's nothing rumbling because it is Christmas time and everybody is, you know, shopping and panicking like the rest of us. So I, I, I can't put a timeline on it because I thought he would have been back by now but I don't think they're unhappy with his play or he wouldn't keep getting all the minutes that he is. But I think that this is a good experiment to continue to let him eat up those minutes and work out some of those kinks in his game that he can come back to the NHL level, a more polished defenseman right now. Uh, I'm excited to see when Casimir Kaskisuo's first game is because I think that three and three is part of the reason why they signed him to a PTO just because that's three games and three nights. Uh, so that means tired defense, which already kind of leaks chances against goaltenders who haven't been quite up to the task yet. Bringing in a veteran kind of helps eliminate some of that stress there. So I will be very interested to see uh, how that plays out in the coming, in the coming week or so. 
And I will too. Um, but first, we did say it was the holidays and we haven't done this in a while. Uh, we're going to talk about our Habs Christmas wish list. If you've been listening to us for, you know, our many, many years now at this point, you'll know what that is. We're going to be talking about that in just one moment here on Locked On Canadians. But first, this episode is brought to you by Sleeper. A new NHL season, well, now we're like halfway through it almost, uh, brings all sorts of possibilities. Anybody could score 50 goals. And any team, I think it's going to be Colorado again, could hoist the Stanley Cup. And what you can do is you can win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. And all you have to do is literally you just pick whether, you know, somebody like a Crosby, a McKinnon, McDavid, now Bedard is going to record more or less than their sleeper projections for anything like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in any given game. And you can play any other thing too. You can play NFL, NBA, MLB, or CFB daily fantasy on sleeper. Um, to win a 100 times on Sleeper, all you need to do is correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me. You can win 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. All right, Scott, here we are again with uh, our Christmas wish list. So before we get into it, I just want to remind everybody to send your mailbag questions for the next episode. You can send us uh, the questions at lockedoncanadians at gmail.com, uh, DM or uh, tag us on Twitter, LO underscore Canadians. And you can also leave them in the YouTube comments. Just put mailbag question or MBQ at the beginning so we know uh, you want us to bring it up on the Friday episode. All right, Scott, every year we do a haves wish list. What is it? I want a power play that doesn't suck. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna rip that bandaid off. Uh, more accurately, I think I would like a penalty kill that is at least average because watching, watching the penalty kill, it feels like watching. Have you ever seen one of those like nature documentaries where there is a poor seal like on an ice flow and they're like, here's the orca. They are, they are circling this. They will have their dinners and then they're just like. What if we just torture this seal for like 10 minutes and then eat it? That is what watching the Canadian's penalty kill is. It's just watching it's an the orca. Seal. Just so you know, it's not the orca, it's the seal. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Habs are the seal, not the orca <laughs> in this instance. They are the seal sitting on the ice floe being circled by, quite frankly, a jerk and for several minutes before either a goal is scored or they get lucky. So... I would like a penalty kill that does not look like a seal about to be eaten by an orca uh, more than even a power play that is above average at this point. I think the power play would just sort itself out through talent. The penalty kill is a coaching and positional thing. Mm -hmm. And that is something that can be fixed. And yes, the power play can too, but the Canadians penalty kill is so passive. It is so uninterested in actually stopping anything that when they take a penalty, they just go, just put the points on the board. I don't need to know what's going to happen because I know what's going to happen. They're going to score a goal and I'm going to be mad about it. And I and think we're the biggest be demoralized, thing demoralized. So we can just skip ahead two minutes. Exactly. Like save me the two minutes so I can record this podcast and then go to bed, you know, <laughs> uh, penalty kill that, that functions is, uh, is very much at the top of my Christmas wish list this year. We would like a penalty kill that will be the orca, not fall victim to it. Yes. Um, also, orcas rule. Uh, they're terrifying, but they rule. Uh, what is next on our wish list? I, I have one. I have one. What is yours? Um, I would like for Cole Caulfield to get his luck back, his shooting percentage back. Oh, you mean like I? I haven't even looked at what he's shooting yet. Uh, now again, well, we talked about the... it about like three weeks ago or two weeks ago, and it was like like half his average. So <laughs> let's take a look right now. Cole Caulfield this year is shooting at seven percent still. Okay, so, so he's still slightly more than half. Slightly yeah, more than half now. Still not great. Um, yeah. 
if that goes back to normal, we're 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 make we're in business here. So like, and that goes hand in hand with the power play. That the power play gets going, Caulfield should be laughing all the way to 30, 35 goals. Yes. If uh, and that also means Nick Suzuki seventy points, uh, Mike Matheson forty five, fifty points on the back end there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it all runs through special teams, ironically enough. Uh, I think also on my wish list, I'd like to see some of these players get healthy. Uh, I'd like to see Alex Newhook back in the lineup. I'd like to see uh, Rafael Harvey Pinard back too, just to give this lineup a little bit more teeth. Even if Harvey Pinard's playing on the fourth line, it's more bite than, and bless him, Michael Pizzetta at this point, that I would like to see on this team. A little bit of health goes a long way towards kind of writing the Canadian ship, maybe with some of these more experienced, well-rounded, statistically better players. Those late goal collapses against don't happen as much because they can control the flow of play more often and just kind of keep things going a little bit. I think that is, I think, and that's something that we know is going to happen in the coming weeks. So they're going to get healthy in the new year. Schedule is going to get tough, but if they're getting healthier, it's it makes for a happy Christmas time knowing that you have more of these body coming back because it has a cascading effect. Healthy NHL players means AHL players go back down to the AHL. AHL players who are ECHL players go back down to the ECHL and all the levels of this team here can kind of get themselves right a little bit, I think. And I think that goes would be helpful for a lot of different teams right now. Are there any trades in our wish list, whether they're incoming or outgoing? I mean... I I think the goalie trade is going to happen in the new year there. There's too many teams that thought they would be better than this who need goaltending. Uh, I don't. I think a prospect defenseman is getting traded here, one of the young guys. It's not going to be Caden Gooley, but I think everybody else is kind of in fair play here at this point that maybe it's part of a package. Uh, the biggest thing is David Savard's kind of holding a spot, but he has a year left on his contract. I think he's going to go at the trade deadline this year a lot like Joel Edmondson did in the summertime, but I think David Savard will go this year and uh, we'll have uh, we'll have quite a thing to check in on with that. But I think the goalie trade is going to be the first thing that happens uh, in this coming year for the Canadians. Um, and then finally, do you think any of the Habs have uh, being traded on their wish list? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think anyone wants out of Montreal, but someone like Tanner Pearson, who maybe wants to go out on a high note, I think Sean Monaghan will get traded to a contender at the trade deadline uh, this year, assuming he stays healthy at this point. But I don't think anyone on this team is asking out of Montreal right now, uh, at least not as far as I can tell. Maybe one of the goalies, well, it's not going to be Samuel Montembeau, but maybe one of the other two goalies who kind of wants that NHL time, but... Outside of that, I don't think anyone's like super seemingly unhappy with the team or anything here right now. So I don't think anyone has their wish list to be get out of the best hockey city in the country. So or yeah, I'm going to say in the world. I don't I don't care. Toronto deal with it. So it is a great city to be in. Um, and in the meantime, we still have one more episode before we take a couple of days, only a couple of days off for the holidays, only only two. So we're not going to be here on the 25th or the 26th. Uh, so make this next mailbag count. Send us great mailbag questions. You you guys, sometimes you come through for us in such a big way. We love that. You give us so much discussion that we talk about it like again for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, LockedOnCanadians at gmail.com, please. Or you can leave them in the YouTube comments and just put mailbag question or MBQ at the beginning. Uh, you can also tweet or... Uh, or um, DM us uh, LO underscore Canadians on Twitter. In the meantime, you can find this podcast wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We're free and available as part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Um, and you'll find both of us on social media. I'm at the Active Stick. Scott is at Scott Metla. Thank you so much for listening, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs>